Well, today we are adding a lighthouse cookie jar to our grill. All right, so we're starting by making our base for our cookie jar. Like we do every month, we are going to take a four inch by three quarter inch strip of white cardstock and wrap it around, this is a Sharpie marker, something about, this di about the diameter of a Sharpie. I use a Sharpie because I figure that's something pretty much most people have access to. Um, Pre-roll it so that we know it's going to go around and use our pencil. Mark approximately where those two pieces meet because we want to put glue on this part but not this part. So we're going to put some glue here. Got a toothpick to spread it right up to that line I just drew and try to cover the whole paper, the whole width in that area because you want a good bond and this needs to dry thoroughly. I, my preference is to actually do this the night before I'm going to make my cookie jar or if you're making a lot of cookie jars like I do, I actually make these ahead. Like I actually have one that I made last month that I'm going to use to continue today's cookie jar and then I've got this one will probably get used next month. Then just on the other side at that end. Now wrap it as tightly as possible around your Sharpie marker. This way we have a good strong st All right, my glue has dried, so now I'm going to take this and put it back on my pencil for a minute. Um, and I picked up the lightest yellow paint I had. It happens to be Daybreak from Folk Art that the people at Plaid sent me. And I'm going to use one of the brushes they sent. And we're just going to paint this little piece that we made. This is going to go on our lid and be our light area, the area where the light bulb would be in our lighthouse. So I am going to now very carefully pop that off. In fact, I think I'm going to see, do I have a toothpick? No, I don't. I don't want to leave it on the, um, pencil because I don't want to accidentally glue it to my pencil with the paint. So I'm going to let that light coat of paint dry and when that's dry we'll come back and we'll start working on our lighthouse. Alright, I have just a piece of original Sculpey mainly because it is a much cheaper clay and we just want to cover the core or base of our cookie jar with some clay because that will make our outside look a little nicer to have that extra barrier. But we do want to roll this pretty thin because we don't want to add too much bulk to our cookie jar. I'm going to cut that in a straight line. I've rolled it out as thin as I could. I'm going to put my core there. I'm going to do that. Pull it up off of the tray. And now, you've, if you've washed my cookie jars before, you've seen this process, but we'll go ahead and talk about it. We are using TLS, Translucent Liquid Sculpey, as our glue. Anytime we are attaching anything other than raw clay to our raw clay, in this case, our paper stock or cardstock core, which for some reason mine got smushed somehow overnight. Not sure how that happened, but that's okay. around and you just want a nice even cover of clay. There's a couple more things we need to do with this before we bake our clay. One is we want to make a slightly thicker area And this we are actually attaching to the clay that we just added, so we don't need the TLS on this layer. 
This will be the bottom of our cookie jar. I do like to make this a little bit bigger or a little bit thicker than the what I'm covering the sides with simply because it tends to behave better. If you go too thin, I have found that the bottom just kind of pulls upward and uh, breaks out. All right, that's fine. Now the not the last thing we need to do at this point in time is make. Just a snake of clay. Oh, I've picked up all kinds of gunk off of my tray. Make sure this is standing straight. A snake of clay that will fit inside. Roll it round again. Push it down so it makes it. That's going to be too fat, I can tell already. This piece is going to be the basis that we are the base we are going to build our lid on. What I like to do is come in. Okay, that was too big. Sometimes it's a matter of trial and error to get that the size you want. There. Now it's working. So now I'm going to bake this for 10 minutes because I want to cure the TLS that's on here. I will go through off camera and make sure this is nice and smooth. I'm going to bake it for 10 minutes and allow it to cool to room temperature. And then when that's accomplished, we'll come back and we will add the pretty layer on. All right, now that our, our two pieces that we did in our last step are baked and cooled, I have conditioned two pieces of clay. I have white in uh, Prima by Sculpey, and I have a red, this happens to be red metallic, you can use any red, it was the first red I came to that was a Fimo, and I want a rather firm clay, I'm hoping that maybe the better quality clay I was hoping wouldn't bleed quite as much as like say a Sculpey, a Sculpey is really bad about bleeding all over everything. So I have conditioned both and washed my hands really well, and I'm going to roll out the white first really thin and then over here I'm going to roll the red and I'm going to try and get it really thin again. Any red clay will work. All right. Now I'm going to cut some thin stripes up. The glitter, the glitter and the metallic will be kind of fun for this. It's not obviously not a necessity. Now I'm going to lay these with the white in the middle, the red on either side. And we'll see how well I did at guessing the height of my cookie jar. Oh, hey. It's almost like I know what I'm doing. Now, hopefully, I've got enough length, do I? Maybe. Let's see if we've got enough to wrap around. We might have to get more white. I'm going to put TLS all the way around our baked clay. We're doing several layers like normal on our cookie jar. You don't need a lot of TLS though, just a little bit. Now, 
hopefully that white is enough to wrap around. Yes, it is. Perfect. Ah, my hands are shaking again. up this seam at the back. It's okay if they don't all meet at the same spot. I'm going to get use my fingers and oops, I forgot to get my cornstarch. Get a little bit of cornstarch on my fingers. This way my fingers will slide over the clay a little better. Still getting a little bit of red on the white. If we need to, after we bake this and get ready to put the finish on, we can always come back with just a little bit of white uh, craft paint and touch up the white stripe in the middle of our cookie jar. All right, I am going to, I'm gonna off camera smooth out this seam a little bit more and then I'm gonna bake this again at the recommended temperature for my clays for a full 10 minutes. And once it's baked and cooled, I'll come back and we'll start working on the lid. All right, I have my cookie jar baked. It's cooling down. It's almost cooled to room temperature. We're gonna start working on the lid. So I'm starting out, I've got some dark blue clay here. This happens to be Fimo in Windsor Blue. Any blue clay that you like. I wanted to go with a dark blue, but any blue that you like. And I'm rolling it out on a piece of parchment paper because I don't want to distort this when I move it to my baking surface. I want it to stay nice and flat. I'm going to add just a bit of cornstarch to the top so that my rolling pin is not sticking as I'm rolling it out. Now this is the this is the closest size round cutter I have to the size of my cookie jar. It's just a little bit bigger. Pull that off there. Pull off the excess and put that off to the side. Now I have some TLS. And my TLS is getting very, very empty. I'm just going to apply a little bit of TLS to the edges of this. And then you need to find the center. And once you're comfortable that you've got it centered, which I will be more comfortable when I can look at it closer, push down. And this is going to need to bake for the full baking time for your clay. So I'm going to move this over to my baking surface. By having it on there, it keeps it from um, warping when I move it. Now, where did I put... Hold on just a second. As soon as I turned the camera off, I found it. I need this little bit of white clay that's left from when we did the center circle on, the center strip on our cookie jar. Now, I want this to be about that tall. I'm not really totally measuring this. I'm just kind of eyeballing it. I can get 
little bit of TLS on the back of that. And place this on our cookie jar. Use another toothpick to clean up the excess TLS I've got. Oops, come on. Make sure that that is level with the bottom. And I am going to bake these two pieces for a full 10 minutes. When they're baked and cooled, I'll be back and we'll go to the next step. All right, those pieces have baked and cooled, and now I'm going to take some more of my blue clay, and I'm just going to roll out using a couple of craft sticks so I get a nice even thickness. I'm going to cut a couple of strips, or a strip rather, not a couple. A couple of cuts here. And now I'm going to pick this up. Well, kind of picked it up. That's okay. Now, I'm going to lay this right here. I'm going to use those craft sticks to kind of support my cookie jar. And now we need a little bit of TLS right on, mainly on that peak of the little part we added on. That's too wide. Okay, that's why I was afraid that was going to be too wide. So I wasn't too worried when I messed it up picking it up. want to do is add just a strip of blue over that front, over that peak. even with the edge where we want it. And then just kind of using the side of my knife to shape it into a nice roof. So I'm going to put that over to the side so I can bake it. Now we're going to add just a simple top on here. To do that, Making this almost, quite frankly, looks like a chocolate chip. Okay, that's kind of the shape I'm going for here. Put some more TLS on this side. Now these two pieces need to bake for 10 minutes. Once they are baked and cooled, I'll come back. We'll add the last step onto our roof slash lid, and then we can put a clear finish on. I'll be right back. All right, these are baked and cooled, so we're going to set the cookie jar off to the side, and we're going to put this little piece onto the bottom of our lid. 
So to do that, I'm actually going to put my lid, I'm going to nestle it in some aluminum foil. Uh, sometimes I do this off camera and don't talk about it, except in the blog post, but I thought I would make sure I talk about it on camera today. This will keep this level. If this tips to the side, this could fall off or slide to the side, and then it wouldn't be centered anymore. So I'm going to put a little bit of TLS in the middle, and then I'm going to put this on here. And I don't care if this is a little messy because this is not really going to show. Now one of the things I like to do, I'll show you, is take my lighthouse and make sure that this is centered. I'll be able to do it better off camera than I can on camera. I kind of moved it. But make sure that this is centered so that it's where you want it, that it's still going to fit, and then this needs to bake for a full 10 minutes. TLS takes the full 10 minutes to cure. If you don't cure it all the way, it's not going to turn as translucent as it, need, as it can, and it's also not going to hold well. So I'm going to bake this for 10 minutes, and then when it's baked and cooled, we'll come back, we'll put a clear finish on the whole lighthouse, and we'll see how this looks. All right, everything is baked and cooled, and because I had this sitting nestled in that foil, this stayed right where I put it. So now let's put a very thin coat of Gloss Mod Podge on everything. So I'm going to put a piece of poster tack on this crap stick and I'm going to push this down onto it because this is going to be hard to hold on to. For this, I think I will probably just do this. So let's get some Gloss Mod Podge out. This is the Mod Podge and the brush, one of the brushes that Plaid sent to me a while back so that I could use them in videos for you guys. So we're just going to put a very thin coat. Don't go thick because a thick coat could get sticky, remain sticky when it dries on the polymer clay. I find that Mod Podge does that on pretty much everything, gloss Mod Podge, if you don't get it thin enough, but it's especially noticeable on polymer clay. So very thin coat. And then I'm going to put this on here so that I can hold it without getting my fingers full of Mod Podge. So I'm going to put a thin coat on here. I'm going to let this dry. And when this is all the way dry, I'll come back and we'll look at our Lighthouse cookie jar. So I'll be right back. And here we have our finished Lighthouse cookie jar with the lid that opens and a nice finished inside. I love how this came out. Um, for the video, I did simplify it. You could, of course, add windows and a little door to this and add some detail around the light at the top. I'd love to see what you guys do with this. So if you make one of these, take a picture and share it with me. I want to see how you dress up these little cookie jars. So I hope you enjoyed today's video. Be sure and check the blog post. There will be photos and detailed how-to instructions for how I did this as well as clay names and all of that good stuff. If you enjoyed the video, be sure and hit the like button. Leave me a comment. Are there things you'd like to see me make for the dollhouse? What, are, what is it you would like to learn to make? I want to make the videos that you want to watch. If you enjoy my content and haven't subscribed, be sure and hit the subscription button and the notification bell so you know when I put up a new video. Thank you very much for watching today and I will talk to you next time. Bye.